I decided that rather than make you watch me do another polar graph by hand, I would try graphing it on Desmos. That gives us a couple of opportunities. One is I can show you how to use Desmos, as most of you are probably going to be using that to do, using Desmos or, or other technology to, to do most of your polar graphs anyway. So this will give us an opportunity to learn how to use it. Another thing it'll do is make a nicer graph, and it'll be faster as well. We're not going to be plotting individual points this time, just looking at the graph. In fact, Desmos is going to be doing the plotting, and it's just kind of doing it behind the scenes. One of the things to notice, though, is that currently my graph is in rectangular mode. And if I want to graph a polar grid, now I can graph this, this equation here, and it'll, it'll do the circular thing that I need it to do, but it won't make sense on this graph paper. So I'm going to change the background graph here by going up to Graph Settings and just selecting this other circular looking graph, and it just changes it to polar graph paper. So having done that, I can click this graph settings button again, and that menu goes away, and now I'm ready to go. Now, the way I've got this set up is to kind of animate the graph rather than just show you the whole thing. That's why this one's turned off. I want to show you how it's made. So I'm going to start by graphing r equal to sine of 3 theta. Before I do that, though, let's make an observation. One is that there's a 3 in the equation. And right now, I don't want to say much more about that than this, except that I want you to see it by the end, by the time we've graphed it, can you tell where the three comes from or what it does? The other thing is to notice that because I'm animating it, A is going to go between zero and pi, and A is the thing that's that's going to decide how, how big my angle is at any given time, right? So right now it's A equals zero, and so there should be a point somewhere on the graph, or there will be as soon as I start to animate this. and uh, but before we do that, I want to see, can we figure out where the graph is going to start? Well, if I plug 0 in for theta in my equation, I'm going to get 3 times 0. Well, that's 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. So my graph is going to start at 0, 0, right here. The other thing I want to point out is that as I graph the sine of 3 theta, my angles are small to begin with, and so they're likely going to be in quadrant 1. I'm graphing the sine in quadrant 1. However, I'm graphing the sine of 3 theta. So as theta gets bigger, 3 theta gets bigger even faster. So I'm going to move through 0 to uh, pi over 2 pretty quickly. Lastly, I want to say that because we're working with a trigonometric function, we're going to be moving in a counterclockwise direction. So as the graph develops, try to think of it as as moving in a counterclockwise direction. See if you can see that movement in the graph. All right, so I'm going to start just manually uh, increasing the, the value of a, which means increasing the value of theta, but I'm just going to give you a tiny peek at first. So here we are down here in quadrant one, and as you can see, the graph did start at zero, zero, and it is moving into quadrant one. Okay, and so the question now is what does it do next? Go a little farther. You can see that it's curving around. And that is very much in line with our idea that we were going to be moving in a clock, counterclockwise direction. So we're moving from 0 into quadrant 1, and I'm not sure what's going to happen next, but think of, think of this motion, right? Think of going in this kind of movement. Now, let's look at another little few steps here. So now we're moving back to 0, 0, but can you see that the whole time I go, I'm moving in this sort of counterclockwise direction? That means if I were walking along this line in this direction, my left hand would be facing, pointing in. Right? My left shoulder would be into this loop, and my right shoulder would be out. So my left shoulder is inside the loop, inside the loop. Now I'm facing, pointing this way, but my left shoulder is still inside the loop, and so on. Now the next thing that's going to happen is, well, let's let's talk about it a little bit. It's it appears that we're going to let's see if I can get this to come just a little bit farther. It looks like we're going to come to zero zero again, and the question now is, is that it? Have we come around to here and stopped? And would we go around again if we were to make another loop, or does something else happen? Well, there's a lit a little bit of a hint here in that. There it is. That there's a tail 
with a little suggestion that we're coming into quadrant three here. And that's exactly what's happening. These graphs tend to be pretty smooth. So although it's pretty bendy right here, when it gets back to zero, my suggestion or my thought is that it's just going to kind of keep going. Now, it sort of feels like it wants to go this way to make another loop in here, but it's not really pointing in the right direction, is it? Looks like it's almost pointing down. Let's see what happens next. Into quadrant three, and then it bends back onto the y-axis. So now we have a, a full loop in quadrant one and half a loop in quadrant three, but it's bending the wrong way for it to go into quadrant three. So it looks like it's going to have to cross over the y-axis. So perhaps we're going to be doing something like this. And sure enough. And when we get back to zero, if I keep going in the same direction, more or less, I'm going to end up in quadrant two. And so there's another loop. Now, can you see where the three in the equation is in the graph. What does that three in this particular equation tell you the graph is going to look like? I hope it's obvious. The other thing that I'll notice about this graph is that because it's a sign, it's hugging the y-axis. Yes, there are other loops involved. But in this case, the sign tells me that it's going to hug the y-axis. Let me back this up and animate it for you. Get a nice background of the, the full graph so you can see what's happening. This is the graph of r equals the sine of three theta. Take a minute now and see if you can figure out what the graph of r equals the cosine of three theta would look like. Oh wait, but not too long. What do you think? r equals the sine of theta started at zero r equals the cosine of 3 theta. When theta equals 0, we're going to get the cosine of 3 times 0. That's going to be 0. And that'll be the cosine of 0. The cosine of 0 is 1. So we're going to start here, right on the x-axis. What do you think is going to happen next? Remember, think counterclockwise. Well, where do you think it'll go after it goes through 0? All right, let's take a look at what happens. We're starting at 1, 0. We're going to move counterclockwise, so we're going to move into quadrant 1. I'm on the axis, so my guess is that ultimately, when the graph is complete, I'll have a loop uh, hugging the, the x-axis. That would make sense, since this is a cosine graph. Let's take a look at the first part of the graph. There we go. Now, that gets me back to 0, but what happens next? If I head off in the same direction as I'm currently pointing, I'm going to have to go this way. I'm going into quadrant four, but I have to keep moving counterclockwise. So probably I'm going to have a loop there. Let's find out. All right. Now I'm standing here. My left shoulder is facing in, pointing into the loop. If I keep moving in the same general direction, I'm going to end up moving into quadrant two. And I'm going to keep moving counterclockwise. I end up making another loop. And then lastly, I'll finish the job. That's the graph of r equals 3 times the cosine of theta. Let me animate that for you. I still have three petals. This is called a three-petaled rose or a three-leaved rose. I still have three leaves. And uh, this time it's a cosine graph. So I'm hugging the x-axis. Now, I could start with theta equals 7 pi over 12 if I wanted to. But that would maybe make my graph start in some other kind of random feeling place. And then I would just go from there. I could still get a complete graph. But we tend to start at theta equals 0 just because it's convenient. So this is the graph of, three, of the cosine of 3 theta. Let's graph the sine of 3 theta at the same time. There's the sine of 3 theta in red and the cosine of 3 theta in blue, a three-petaled rose. I hope you're the curious type. Did you at all wonder what would happen if I changed this to a 5 or a 4? I don't seem to be able to see that. There we go, 5. 
what happens if I change it to a 5? Well, it's still the cosine of 0 at 0. So I'm still going to be starting here. I'm still going to be moving counterclockwise. Because it's a, a similar graph, it's probably going to start by doing this and then move into the, the next quadrant. But if a three-petaled road happens when you have a three here, chances are I'm going to end up with a five-petaled rose. Let's find out. There's my first petal. It's a lot flatter than the, the, the three one was. That's because we're going to need five of them all together, so I need more room. There's my second petal. Keep moving in the same direction. Which way do you think I'm going to go? Looks like I need to go into quadrant one. How, how, what's my angle like? There we go. I don't quite get back to the y axis until I get right down to 0, 0. Okay, let's go, let's do another one. And another one. This is a five petaled rose. Notice that the only petal hugging the axis is the one we started with because we started with theta equals 0. And that's hugging the x-axis, which makes sense because this is a cosine graph. All right, let me animate it for you. This is the graph. Oops, I turned it off instead of animating. This is the graph of r equals the cosine of 5 theta. Guess what I'm going to graph next? r equals the sine of 5 theta. Before I do that, I want to make a prediction about where it's going to start and which axis it's going to hug. Well, if theta is 0, then I'm going to have the sine of 5 times 0, which is the sine of 0. So I'm going to be starting here again. Because I have to move counterclockwise, I'll be moving into the first quadrant, and then coming back down here, and then probably into the second quadrant. Hmm. Which axis do you think it's going to hug this time? That will be the y-axis. We don't know whether it's going to be the positive or the negative y-axis, but we'll find out soon enough. There's my first loop and my second loop. Ah, this time it hugs the positive x-axis. Sorry, the positive y-axis. And back to the beginning. This is a sine curve, so it's hugging the y-axis. Let's animate that. And once this is done, I'll graph y equals or r equals the cosine of 5 theta on the same grid. This time cosine is red. Notice that the cosine graph is hugging the x-axis and the sine graph, the blue one, is hugging the y-axis. All right, I'm not going to beat around the bush too much anymore. Let's change it to 7. I'll go ahead and get rid of that cosine. I'll stick with the sine for right now. And I think I will back it up. I'll change this to a 7. I don't really think I'm going to need this anymore, but I'll go ahead and change that anyway. This is a sine graph, so it's going to start at 0 and go into the first quadrant. But my petals are going to be skinnier because I need to squeeze 7 of them in there this time. Okay, I'm hugging a y-axis. Now, notice that the first time we did this with a 3x, with 3 theta maybe, we hugged the negative y-axis. When it was a 5, it was the positive y-axis. When it was a 7, it was the negative. So what do you think 9 is going to be? Probably the positive y-axis. Changed the wrong one there. There we go. Anyway, I think you probably get the idea. This rose has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 petals because of the 9 in the argument. It starts at 0, 0 and goes into the first quadrant first. And then the quadrant 3, 1, 3, hugs an axis, 2, 4, 2, 4, and back to 0. Any odd number in this position is going to do that for us. There's the 13. How about 19? Starting here, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 petals. So no real surprise. Now we know what these do. I forgot about my time limit with this software, so I'm going to stop here and we'll do the next batch on a different video.